his chassis level 1 research yet as he tries to get his mining going again. But he does have the, uh, excuse me, he does have the support of his warping ships as well as Starfleet Command has 60 seconds before it's ready again. He'll be able to get in another three ships as we see that Boggs is over here with his Katingas as well as one Quebec or Quebec or KBQ, whatever you want to call it. But he is moving down as well as Yandin. It looks like Yandin that they are going to, they see that Lupus is turning up, he is turtling a bit, and they're going to go down and actually support Boggs because Boggs' his base is fairly well getting attacked by those two battle cruisers, the prototype as well as the B8 Warfighter prototype, how the Warfighter prototype is taking up quite a bit of damage. He needs to be very careful about getting out of there because Yannin ships are coming down and they will be problematic for him if a damage ship is trying to repair but gets caught by those. Up here we see that Boggs does have his Katingas and one Quebec. He is going to be attacking, oh, but one slight, one Katinga slightly out of position getting tagged by the Starbase. And they're, they're trying to take out this miner. They're putting on quite a bit of damage. But the Katingas are rather fragile ships. They're trying to stay away from that Starbase. And we go back over here and we see that, yes, Yandin has caught up with Shute's fleet. Shute is firing on it. However, oh no, those cubes are faster. And it does look like Shute is going to lose the prototype. The other two battlecruisers turning around trying to protect it, but that the battlecruiser is just not fast enough. The Yandin is going to be following them with the scout cubes, and we see a few ships from Box now to support, and that prototype is going to get hurt. The other two are going to go, or looking to go the other way to try and get out of there, as the prototype does... Oh no! The prototype has gotten away! Oh my god. Oh no, but here is the dodecahedron. Excuse me, folks. The, it did not get away. A dodecahedron is going to be able to follow it and just take it out at its leisure. We'll see whether Shute has... No, Shute has only queued up three of the B-5 battlecruisers. So once that prototype is gone, he is not going to be able to make too many of those. As the prototype goes down... Shute down to two battle cruisers. Oh no! And the Klingon ships are just keeping on these, keeping on this battle cruiser, looking to take it out, putting some damage on it. However, those fighters are tagging on the the excuse me the Quebec. Uh, but it looks like Shute is going to lose another battle cruiser. Oh, that is really really going to hurt. Um, just and here comes a descent class from. Lupus, a uh, slightly odd choice. Well, it could have recharged your shield of that. Actually, the battle preserve, but unfortunately, it's a little late. And with the help, being able to fight off against these ships, however, at a, a severe disadvantage. And here are another two battle cruisers coming in. But however, they're just taking quite a bit of damage here. And without that prototype, it's just not good. And we see all those quantum torpedoes, they are nice, but they do miss, you know, hitting those large ships. But Shute and Lupus are not giving up, they're, they're coming right back in, it, you know, tr to pressure bogs. And we see the small ships taking quite a bit of damage. However, they are, they are going to be able to repair, not getting into the yard, not getting tagged enough. We'll see if that one Brel gets in, does it? No, and it gets stopped right there, and a Katinga going down. More top main classes over here. Oh, but here comes Yandin. Yandin with his Scout Cube and Dodecahedron, and it's going to catch these battle cruisers. And this one battle cruiser being very damaged needs to get out of there, needs to get a repair off. Or the, the descent. Oh, he has already used his special. We'll see if that can get away. Will it? Will it? He's Yandin is following, keeping up on the battle cruiser, doing quite a bit of damage. However, it might just be able to get away. Only one scout cube and a cohort following it. Oh, and it's gonna it's gonna be a race here. It's getting closer and closer to the yard. However, it is not gonna make it, folks. It's just taking too much damage. And there's a Quebec 
following on it, and will it? No, it's not going to. Just a little bit more. Is it going to get in the yard? No, it does not, folks. It gets destroyed utterly. And we see Shute just taking a whole hell of a lot of damage, losing battle cruisers, and Katinga's coming up behind those ships. We take a look up here at Lupus. Lupus is building nothing, really. Nothing in his yards. He's turning up, turtling up does not have an expansion and folks this is looking very very bad for the Hungarians as Yandin and Boggs just have a commanding lead right now we look into Yandin's base and Yandin has a sphere up or excuse me a sphere chassis looks like he is waiting for the resources however he is quite a bit off on dilithium you'd need about another eight to nine hundred more to be able to build that sphere then we go back down, and we see that the Katingas and whatnot are taking on this battle cruiser. We see Lupus coming to help, however, he just does, does, does not have enough ships, only relying on those warpins. It's just not enough to fight back against. We see Box is losing some ships, but however, those are some lonely vessels right there. And as you remember, folks, it is very, very dangerous for a Federation player now, or to send their warpins in a situation like this because they do lose quite a bit of supply when that happens well and we'll be able to see we see Lupus right now has 264 supply and we'll see if he does he's going to lose this and we'll see just how, exactly how much supply he'll lose by losing this Excelsior class we see Yandin does lose a probe that's gonna hurt a little bit but it, it actually looks like this this Excelsior might get away it is long range it's able to fire from behind but no Box is flying up and attacking it, and he is going to lose that Excelsior class, Lupus, and that's one of his few ships, and it's going to hurt. And as we see, folks, there, Lupus went from 264 supply to 240. A loss of 24 supply for losing that one ship, it does hurt quite a bit. Although it does appear, no, he is not going to get that other Excelsior away. The last few shots are going to be taken by Boggs, and down goes another Excelsior that is really going to start to eat at Lucas's supply. And it is just a very lonely battle down here. Two battle cruisers being able to fight at, Bo at Boggs's base. Yandin does not appear to have much left. It does seem that he lost his scout cubes as they are in the midst of fighting. However, that dodecahedron is still up. However, that sphere should be building, yep, and the sphere is actually done, and let's see what kind of sphere we have. We have a, a torpedo regen sphere, okay. So we have a torpedo regen sphere, and is now heading down, and this is going to just put so much damage on the rest of these vessels that it's not going to be about, oh my god, and Lupus is warping in another descent class ship. You don't see this very often in games that all the Descent class, while its ability to recharge shields is quite unique and very special. Unfortunately, however, it does take a long time to recharge, and while the Descent can put out a nice amount of damage with an offensive value of 38, it is just usually better to put out three of the smaller ships. Their weapons usually hit more, they have more special abilities. And we see that they are currently being able to keep Boggs at bay. However, the sphere is coming. The sphere is coming. Um, so, still not looking too great for the Hungarians right now. Ooh, these probes going in of, before the sphere. Maybe trying to pull the ships up to it. Yes, they are. It looks like Lupus is going to lose that torpedo refit. It would have been a very nice ship to have. But you see the spear just wiping it out, or the smaller ships. And we can see the two descent classes just fighting on their own, and being pushed back now by seeing the spear. While Box follows them, putting on a little bit of damage, not too much. The descents have a nice defensive value at 74 for that one, and 80 for the one with the two silver bars. Almost taking out that Quebec. The Quebec, oh, we see that descent lost its engines for a little bit. The Quebec able to get away. 
we see that the dodecahedron's ability to take out subsystems is doing quite well. As we see that the, while the descents can stay around, they can are just not putting up too much damage. Although we take a look at um, excuse me, Shute's base, we see that he does have four B5 battlecruisers and he'll be using those to support the descents. And they are going to head back in. The sphere now going away, not not wanting to engage those five B5s there. And we could see a bit of a turnaround here as those B5s, as we've seen before, can put quite a bit of damage on spheres. Let's take a quick look at the base and see what we have going on. We see nothing really here building from the small yard. Um, I would think to see S2s as their special, the Alpha Catcher Cell White would do quite well. And oh no, the the Dodecahedron has been turned into a relay. And we see that it has an extreme defensive value as well as a, a very good offensive value. And it's just going to, this is a very bad place for them to engage with that relay right there. As we see that they're just, it's just a little too much. We see the, this B5 trying to take on the relay. 